first in a series of new videos, Chemistry Behind the Headlines. And today we're going to look at methadrone. The lead story on the BBC website today is that two teenagers in the northeast of England have died while taking the legal high methadrone, otherwise known as MCATs or Meow. And we're going to look at the chemistry of this drug. What's actually known? What other drugs is it like? What might its toxicity be? And try and understand this in terms of the organic chemistry behind the story. Interestingly, a survey of Mixmag, which is a clubbers magazine, reported that one in three clubbers had used methadrone in the last month. That makes it the fourth most popular drug amongst clubbers. So, although this is apparently a relatively new drug in terms of how it's being reported in the press, this is a drug that's widely established in youth culture and club culture. And so it's one that has to be thought about quite seriously in chemical terms. So the best place to start thinking about a drug like methadrone is to look at the structure that the drug has and to look at the structures of molecules which are related to methadrone. This should give us an understanding as to its potential mode of action. So here you can see the structure of methadrone. You can see it's quite a simple compound. An aromatic ring on the left hand side, a ketone functional group and an amine on the right hand side of the molecule. Now, what I see immediately looking at the structure of methadrone is it's really very similar in structure to crystal meth, a well-known drug. So let's take a look at the structure of crystal meth and compare it to the structure of methadrone. As you'll see, crystal meth simply has a methyl group missing from the aromatic ring and it has no carbonyl group on crystal meth. Crystal meth is widely accepted as a dangerous drug, causing lots of problems in people who use it regularly. It causes significant problems of addiction. For example, Rufus Wainwright talks a lot in his music and his uh, experiences of being addicted to crystal meth and how it affected his life. In actual fact, Rufus Wainwright went blind while taking crystal meth and suffering from addiction to it. Methadrone, although technically a legal high still in the UK, is a relatively similar drug structurally to crystal meth. So you might expect it to have some of the same effects. And it certainly is a stimulant, leads to alertness, leads to people being talkative and saying that they feel particularly open. These are all things that people say on crystal meth. It lowers your inhibitions. So it seems likely that these two drugs are acting on very similar receptors within the brain of the patient. Interestingly, if you look at the structure of amphetamine here, rather than methamphetamine, you'll notice that the methyl group on the nitrogen is missing. This is why crystal meth, methamphetamine, has a much bigger effect in the brain than amphetamine. The methyl group helps carry the drug across the blood-brain barrier. So this is also probably true in methadrone. The methyl group present on that nitrogen will be helping to carry the drug across the blood-brain barrier and get it to the targets where it can be active. So this drug is probably more like methamphetamine than amphetamine. And methamphetamine is a much more addictive and dangerous drug than a simple amphetamine. The other thing to notice is the wavy line. That means that methadrone is sold as a mixture of enantiomers. And it's known that in methamphetamine, there is a significant difference between the activity of those two enantiomers. In fact, one is sold over the counter as a regular cure remedy, a cold cure remedy, whereas the other is the very active, addictive, and dangerous form of the drug. So it may well be with methadrone that the two enantiomers of the drug have quite different activities. And as yet, in the case of methadrone, that's not understood at all. If we look here at the structure of ecstasy, you'll see this is also quite similar to the structure of methadrone. Looking at the compound, again, the carbonyl group is missing, that's present in methadrone, and instead of a methyl group attached to the aromatic ring, we have an acetal-type functional group present in ecstasy. But fundamentally, that amine-type structure, which is often related with the activity of these drugs, is retained in this molecule. So again, I would expect methadrone to be somewhat similar to ecstasy. So you're looking here at a sample of methadrone, and here in the UK it's typically sold as a plant food, a plant fertiliser. And this is how they get around the distribution of this drug. Um, the drug is officially legal in the UK, but we'll talk a little bit more later about why this drug should be legal when some very similar drugs happen to be illegal. 
as with any drug that you purchase on the street, it's very difficult to know the true composition of this material. There'll certainly be some active molecule within it, but it will also, the same as cocaine and many other drugs, be cut with a lot of impurities so that the dealers can make more money out of what they're selling. So what are the known side effects of mephedrone? Well, these aren't the first deaths. They're the first deaths in the UK that have been reported from kids taking mephedrone, but they're certainly not the first deaths worldwide. There have been high-profile deaths in Sweden, and in fact mephedrone has been banned now in a number of territories. And there was a survey of people who said they've used the drug, looking at what side effects they suffered from. And over half of the side effects said they suffered from headaches, and a significant number said they suffered from heart palpitations. And that's interesting, because it's known that a compound structurally quite similar to mephedrone, and you're looking at the structure here, causes heart palpitations and cardiotoxicity. And it's not impossible that mephedrone could be converted into this compound in the body. It's a simple reduction of the ketone to give an alcohol functional group. This is the kind of reaction that can occur metabolically. So it is possible that mephedrone could be metabolized within your body into something that's cardiotoxic, which will affect a number of people taking this drug. So you may be wondering, why is mephedrone a legal drug in the UK? Well, the simple reason is it just hasn't been banned yet. The structure hadn't come up, it hadn't been looked at, it hadn't been available. And it is also worth noting that unlike ecstasy and methamphetamine, this is not a drug that's ever been tested in animals or tested as part of a medical trial. Both ecstasy and methamphetamine have been tested and some are even used in medical applications. This is a drug that's never been tested in an animal. So it's really only being used in people for the first time. So it is difficult to know what the side effects with this drug will be in long-term use across a large number of the population. But structurally, looking at the drug, I'd say they would be similar to the side effects of crystal meth or ecstasy. What's my final message about this drug? If you're taking it because it's legal and therefore you perceive it to be safe, well don't, because it's similar to amphetamines and many other drugs which are banned in terms of its chemical structure, and that means it will be similar in terms of its activity. It is similar chemically to many drugs that are highly addictive. So if you're taking this drug because you think it's legal and therefore non-addictive, again, that is the wrong reason to be taking this drug. Don't take this drug if you wouldn't be prepared to take other drugs like crystal meth or like ecstasy, because in principle the chemical structure would lead us to believe this is a similar kind of drug to those kinds of drugs. And with that kind of information, you can probably make your own choices on what to do.